what's up everyone first off want to thank you for clicking on this video taking the time out of your day to watch this video i truly appreciate it and in this video i'm going to be talking about five habits that significantly improve the quality of my life now i do want to preface by saying that i recognize just because a habit worked for one person doesn't mean that it will work for another person so i will you know talk about each habit talk about where i was before talked about how i incorporated it and the improvements i noticed after I would invite you with this video to keep an open mind and see if where I was before resonates with you at all. And if it does, then just explore the habit, research it more and use it maybe as like a brainstorming point or consider implementing it. See if it helps you. If it doesn't, of course, then you can uh, not implement it. But if it does, and I hope it will, then think about implementing the habit. So yeah, I just wanted to preface that because it's, again, I recognize just because something works for one person doesn't mean it'll work for another. Without further ado, let's dive into the video. All right, and by the way, I do have some notes in front of me. If I'm looking down at any point, I'm just looking at my notes. So the first habit I wanna talk about is taking in less news, putting my phone down and enjoying life more often. Now, when I was more entrenched in kind of the news and the current events side of things, I found that the articles I would read or the videos I would watch, they used to be fairly negative. And this is understandable because, uh, you know, news media outlets and other media outlets at the end of the day, they're for profit, right? And they know that these negative headlines, they get more clicks and then generate more money for them, right? But I found when I was consuming all these things, I started to kind of get a negative worldview in my head. I would think that, oh, you know, things are going bad and uh, my community, you know, there's more crime happening, et cetera, et cetera. But when I would actually go out in my day to day, I knew that this was just not true, right? When I would go out, talk to people in my day to day, I had a good experience every once in a while, you know, you run into a difficult to deal with person for the most part, people are very nice, respectful, and you know, I'm nice and respectful back. And overall my, again, experience with the outside world trends to be on the positive side. But when I was entrenched in all these news articles and media, I thought that, Hey, this world is very negative and you know, bad things are happening. So when I dropped this habit out of my life, I found that I was able to focus on the positive a lot easier and just keep a positive worldview without as much effort. And the next habit I wanna talk about, which uh, feeds into this a little bit, is putting my phone down and just enjoying life more. You know, I recognize now that life is short, right? It definitely doesn't feel like that way sometimes, but it's true. I might not be around tomorrow. My family and friends, one of them may not be around, right? So instead of just sitting with them and scrolling on my phone the whole time while I'm sitting with them, I found that, you know, it's better to sit with them, really embrace the moment and enjoy my time with them because who knows when I'll be gone or when they'll be gone. And this has helped me improve the quality of my relationships. The second habit I want to talk about is a dopamine detox, right? For those who are not familiar, a dopamine detox is where you take habits that give you instant gratification. So like scrolling on your phone or eating a lot of junk food, etc., etc., and you either cut them out completely or significantly lower the amount of time you spend doing them. When I did this, I found that I had a lot more free time. And because I didn't really have anything to do, I tended to use that free time for productive activities. Who I was before the dopamine detox was, you know, or if we go way back before even the self improvement stuff, I wasn't really productive at all. You know, I would be like scrolling through my phone all the time and just doing pointless things. Basically, throughout my day, there was zero productivity going on, right. And by doing a dopamine detox, I was able to, because basically, I guess to summarize the benefits of it, for me, two things get me to do something, either instant gratification or delayed gratification, or we can summarize even that into just gratification. So if anything provides gratification, you know, I'm going to want to do it right now, since I had cut off or significantly reduced the instant gratification, my only option left to get any sense of gratification was the delayed gratification. So, you know, in my mind, I was like, okay, I can't do these instant activities. So my only options now are either to get no gratification or to try my hand at these activities that are more difficult, will take longer to get gratification from, but it will eventually, you know, come. And that was things like, you know, lifting, focusing on my career, even this social media stuff and, um, you know, more productive activities like that. And what I found is again, with the free time I have by cutting out the instant gratification activities, I naturally just tend to trend towards doing activities with delayed gratification, reading, meditation, or other examples, right? So just cutting it out, 
significantly improve my quality of life. The next one I want to talk about is deep work. Now, deep work, for those who may not be familiar, is a term coined by Cal Newport. Cal Newport has written a whole book on it and the concept of deep work and why it's important. The TLDR of the whole thing is that book teaches you how to do really focused work and focus on one task at a time and knock it out of the park, right? Before I incorporated deep work, when I would go to either study or in my day, in my day job, I would have like a task and then I would get pinged on Slack. So I, my attention would divert there. And, um, you know, maybe I got an email. So I respond to an email on the side. And what this led to was me being constantly distracted and not being able to finish my tasks quite as quickly because my attention is being broken every few minutes, right? Now, ever since I incorporated deep work, I take one thing, I focus on it, and this is usually like the most impactful thing, right? And I get it finished. What my, my schedule is kind of revolved to incorporate deep work as well, right? Now I wake up around between five to 7 a.m. every single day, get my cup of coffee, and I work straight for four hours, focusing on the most important tasks of the day. And I found by incorporating deep work, I've been able to work less hours and get more done. So I would invite you to read this book and, you know, see if it resonates with you at all. Try it out and see if you notice a benefit with deep work. The next thing is, and th this is probably like th this one and the next one I'm about to talk about were the most life changing for me. Had I not done these, I don't think I would have gone anywhere in my self-improvement journey. So point number four is focusing on one thing to start, right? Self-improvement was very intimidating for me at the beginning because I saw these people who would like wake up right at like 5 a.m. and then they'd like make their bed and their room was completely clean and then they'd work and they're killing it at work. Then right after work, they're going to the gym and you know they're eating broccoli and they're just doing everything right. And that was intimidating and very difficult to do. I would you know start a routine, stick with it maybe for two weeks, and then I would slip up a little bit. So instead of following my diet, maybe I had a chocolate bar. And then, then it would just be like a downward uh, you know, slope from there. So I'd be like, okay, I've had a chocolate bar, whatever, I'll wake up a little later tomorrow. And then that habit would be broken and slowly but surely I'd be back to my old ways, right? And then I read this book, or rather I read the summary of the book, The One Thing, right? And what this book invites you to do, at least I think, because again, I read the summary, I didn't, I didn't read the book. so. Um, what this book invites you to do is instead of focusing on, you know, 10 different things and making sure they're all perfect, find one thing that would, if you did it right, would have a big impact in your life and just focus on that. So what I did was I just focused on, you know, nutrition and workout. So even if I did nothing else productive the whole day, I would make sure that I had my workout routine, right? I was going to the gym and following my exercises and that I had my diet correct. The benefit that this led to was that for the first time in my life, I actually set a goal and followed through with it. You know, I started to see physical changes in my body. I started to look better. And that was like a epiphany moment for me because I was like, I was holding myself back in this side of my life, which is, you know, the physical fitness side for so long because I thought I couldn't do it. And now I've finally done it. I've accomplished what I set out to accomplish. Okay. So if I was holding myself back in this area, what other areas was I holding myself back on? And then I realized career, I was holding myself back on as well. I wasn't going down the career track that I wanted to. And then I switched that and now I'm in a job I actually enjoy. So it just started to, there was like this domino effect, right? That one, seeing myself accomplish that one goal started this domino effect where I felt confident now that, hey, if I can improve this quality of my life, why not this other quality? Why not this other quality? And that's why that was, Again, just a pivotal moment. I can't put enough emphasis on how much that changed my life. And next, this kind of feeds into point number four, four, but that was lifting. And it's the only reason I've been able to stick with any of my other goals in life, period. And I feel like, if anything, that's an understatement rather than an overstatement. Had I not seen the benefits of lifting and dieting, you know, the physical changes in my body and see myself accomplish a goal that I'd set out to, I don't think I would have ever had the motivation to, you know, focus on school, career, or even, you know, with the social media thing I'm trying to do right now, I'm trying to grow my channel, my, you know, my TikTok, my Instagram, and my YouTube. No way would I have had the motivation or discipline to stick with these things. 
lifting again was the first goal that I accomplished. I saw it out till the absolute end throughout all the difficulties, throughout all the you know obstacles that came in the way. And completing that has given me the confidence to know that truly I can do accomplish any goal that I set out to accomplish. I just need to focus, figure out the work that needs to be done, do it day in and day out. That effort will stack up and I will reach my end destination. So yeah, that was, uh, you know, the whole video, the five habits that have helped me the most and significantly improved my quality of life. There are more here and there. These are the ones um, that I think have really helped me to improve on the career side and also just uh, feeling better about, you know, like my physical shape and they've helped me keep a more positive attitude throughout life as well. I hope that was helpful. Any questions, please leave them in the comments. Please do like, comment and subscribe and I'll talk to you later. Peace.